Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I want to ask a question today. Is God healing people from the coronavirus? And the, the reason I'm asking this question is because I've actually seen, um, there have been some testimonies come up on YouTube and other places online of people being healed by God from the coronavirus. And, and I watched one specifically a few days ago of this guy um, who the doctors were saying he's you're getting worse. He, you know he goes back to the doc, He goes back to the doctor. And they say you're getting worse, and then he at night he's praying and and he says claims that he felt God breathe into him. And the next day he goes back and the doctor said you're completely fine. There's nothing wrong with you. And, and so there have been these these cases or these you know testimonies being told of these people who have said that God has healed their bodies from the coronavirus. And, and the question that raises in my mind, you know, when I hear something like that is immediately I go, should, should I believe this, right? You know, sometimes I hear a testimony of someone being healed and immediately I'm just like full of faith and, you know, feeling like fired up by it. And I'm like, yeah, all right, God. And then on the other side, you know, sometimes I, I hear testimonies and this skeptical attitude raises in my mind and I'm like, eh, was that really God? Was that just coincidence? Or, you know, are they making this up or, or is, you know... It's just, there's these two different ways we could go with it. And I honestly believe that God has a way that he wants us to go. Um, when, when we hear a testimony like this, I believe God has a response that he wants us as believers to have. And, I, and I'm going to show you that response. And I'm going to show you a few other responses as well from scripture. So I'm going to read an account from Acts chapter 14, starting in verse 2. It says, But the Jews who disbelieved stirred up the minds of the Gentiles and embittered them against the brethren. Therefore, they spent a long time there speaking boldly with reliance upon the Lord, who was testifying to the word of his grace, granting that signs and wonders be done by their hands. But the people of the city were divided, and some sided with the Jews, and some with the apostles. So this is an account of Paul and Barnabas, and they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, while they're preaching the gospel, God is performing, using them to perform signs and wonders. And it actually says that the reason God does that is, is because he is, in a sense, backing up his word. He's, he's a, confirming the message of grace, the message of Jesus Christ. And, and so I think that's one thing we need to look at. When someone is saying, God healed me, you know, we also need to ask the question, um, is the good news being preached? And, and, and if it is, I honestly believe that is a sure sign that, yes, what they're saying is true. And God really did step in and did do something. So I want to jump ahead a little to a specific healing that took place in Acts chapter 14, starting in verse 8. At Lystra, a man was sitting who had no strength in his feet, lame from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man was listening to Paul as he spoke, who, when he had fixed his gaze on him and had seen that he had faith to be made well, said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he leapt up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they raised their voice, saying in the Lycaonian language, the gods have become like men and have come down to us. So this is an account of a man who's been lame from birth. And Paul says, get up, you know, and the guy gets up and immediately gets healed. And, and I want you to notice the crowd's reaction to this healing. You know, instead of the crowd saying, wow, how did this happen? You know, or, or you know, wow, how come you have the authority to heal this man? They immediately actually attribute this man's healing to uh, to another god, to a false god, and, and they and it it goes on to talk about how they tried to offer sacrifices to Paul and Barnabas because they thought that they actually were gods come come down, and you know, and Paul and Barnabas have a hard time stopping these people and explaining, no, we did not do this, God did this, and He is confirming the message of the gospel, and that's the reason He did this. So I want to look at these two reactions from these people in Acts chapter 14. The first reaction is that people looked at the miracles. They, they saw the miracles with their own eyes, and yet they refused to believe. And, and what I take away from this is, is just the truth that miracles in and of themselves do not always produce faith. You know, you know in the Bible, faith, uh, God describes faith as the evidence of things unseen. You know, the way that most of the world is, I, I won't believe it until I see it. And God actually says, we won't see it until we believe it. And, and yet these people, they saw, they technically, physically saw the miracles with their eyes, and yet they didn't see the truth behind the miracles because they chose not to believe the miracles even when they saw them. And, and I believe that's one way that us as believers, as Christians, can react today. 
Um, and, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna kind of give Jesus's response to that in a second. The second way I believe we can react is is the way that these other people reacted, in that they actually attributed a miracle of God to uh, to a false god or to another you know quote unquote deity or to another being or whatever. They they attributed the miracles of God to someone else. And, and I honestly believe that's how we can react to today. There are a lot of believers. Um, you know, and, and a lot of people online that talk about this that believe that miracles have ceased. And, and so when they see supernatural events or they, when they see miracles, they choose to always attribute those things to the devil to say, well, that's demonic. And here is Jesus's response to both of these reactions, whether we choose to disbelieve or whether we attribute these miracles to something else. Listen to his response in Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 40. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not hinder him, for there is no one who will perform a miracle in my name and be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is for us. I, I think this reaction is amazing. Jesus says, Jesus doesn't even know this guy, right? I mean, I mean, obviously, Jesus is the Son of God. He probably knew who they were talking about (laughs) immediately. But at the same time, Jesus did not have to explain to his disciples why it was okay to let this guy keep casting out demons and not somebody else. His his immediate instinct reaction was, man, don't stop that guy. If he's casting demons out in my name and they're leaving, that means that's a sign that he is listening to the Holy Spirit, that, that he knows me. That's a sign that he is actually doing these things with God's authority and not in his authority or and not in someone else's authority. And the Pharisees are a good example of, of a group of people who got real mad about this idea. Jesus went around casting out demons left and right. And, you know, the Pharisees, they actually said that he casts out demons by the ruler of the demons. They, they thought that Jesus was going around casting demons out uh, using the Satan's authority, using, you know, using the power of Satan. And Jesus actually says in another place in Scripture, a, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. And, and he's making this point that, Satan is not going to cast out demons, you know, like Satan is not going to tear down his own kingdom he's trying to build. So look at Jesus' response one more time. He chooses to believe that what this guy is doing is a part of his kingdom. And so I believe we should have a response of faith, of belief. And then on the other side, he chooses to attribute these miracles to God. This guy casting out demons, he chooses to attribute this authority to his heavenly father. And so I believe we should have that same reaction. And I do want to add this quick note to to what I'm saying. We do need to use wisdom. And yeah, we do need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if something demonic is going on, you know, or if someone's a charlatan and and just trying to fool people, I believe the Holy Spirit's going to give us wisdom and, and show us that that is not from God. But I'm just trying to show you Jesus's default response. And this is what I honestly believe the Spirit of God has been showing me this week while I've been seeing these testimonies of people getting healed. And it is that we as Christians, we should be liberal in our faith and we should be conservative in our skepticism. And I'm not talking about liberal and conservative you know, politics or anything like that. I'm just using those words you know, to say that we should be generous in our faith, in the usage of our faith, and we should not be generous you know, we should be stingy with our skepticism. We, we should be quick to believe that God is actually doing something. And, and the reason I honestly believe we should be, you know, and the reason I honestly believe we should be so quick to believe that God is at work is because he's always at work. When Jesus was on earth, he, he went around healing people left and right. Every person that came to him for healing got healed in the gospels. If that was God's response to sickness and disease then, That is God's response to sickness and disease now. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. God's heart for healing is the same that it was when Jesus walked the earth. So several days ago, my second daughter, Iona, actually came down with a fever. Um, You know, and we've been quarantined. We've been staying at home. We've been staying away from people um, just because that's what the, our city is telling us to do right now. So we're trying to obey the rules they've set down. You know, we're trying to be uh, supportive of the decisions that they're making. But so even though we've been at home, she comes down with this fever. And, you know, my first, that first thought that pops up is like, oh no, you know, is this the coronavirus? And so that night she actually went to bed early. She got up the next day and I thought, oh, maybe she's doing better. 
Um, but by the time evening came around, um, she the fever came back worse, and she actually got a really bad headache. Um, and she's laying in her bed, and she actually starts to get a little hyster- hysterical. She is like freaking out a little bit, and probably because her head was hurting so much. Um, me and my wife Leslie, we were trying not to freak out. You know, we're trying to stay calm um, and assess the situation. And and I chose to do that second night what I should have done the first night. And I just I kind of stood next to her, and she's in her bed. And I started to talk to her about um, the same thing I talked about in a video several weeks ago um, that I posted uh, called uh, What God Says About the Coronavirus. And it is just the fact that God's perspective on things like the coronavirus or, or any pandemic or any um, you know crazy situation we go through, God's perspective is do not be afraid. He says that over and over and over in scripture. So I began to talk to her about that. And I told my own heart, you know what? She has a fever. That's okay. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not, you know, and and I'm not trying to tell you don't be practical about stuff. I'm not trying to tell you, you know, never to go to the doctor. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not against those things. But at the same time, the word of God says, and and the Holy Spirit says, do not be afraid. Jesus, when he's walking across the water to the disciples, you know, and they're freaking out, he says, it is I, do not be afraid. And that is what God is saying to us today. It is I, don't be afraid. And so in that moment, I started talking to Iona and I started saying, Iona, you know, we don't have to be afraid of this. We don't have to be worried because God is with us and and God wants to heal you and God loves you. You know, and I just started to talk to her about God's character, about who he is. And within a minute, she had calmed down. And then I just decided to pray for her. For her. And I probably should have prayed for her the night before that. But I just put my hand on her and I, I'm just going to share uh, the, the kind of prayer that I prayed. It went something like this. I just started to talk to God. And, you know, I tell my kids all the time, um, um, prayer, they're, they're like, how do we pray, Daddy? And I, I always tell them prayer is just a conversation with God, you know, and if you don't know where to start, man, talk to God as if he's your he's a he's a loving father. Just just talk to him as if you're a child and say, God, I don't know what to say. I'm a child. <laughs> right. And, and that is the perspective I try to have with God all the time. Because honestly, you know, I think we're all going to get to heaven and we're going to realize, man, I knew so much less than I thought I knew. You know, I was so much less intelligent than I thought I was, or I had so much less wisdom than I thought I did. God was the one with the wisdom. He was the one with the intelligence. He was the one with the power, you know? And so I started to pray this prayer and I just said, you know, God, I I can't, uh, I can't bring anything to the table myself. I only have the righteousness of God based on what Jesus did for me. It's, It's not based on anything I've done. And I said, but because of that, I get to come boldly before the throne room of grace. And I know uh, that when Jesus died on the cross, he not only did he uh, carry my sin upon his shoulders, not only was my sin placed upon him, but the Bible actually says that he carried my sicknesses. He bore my diseases upon himself as well. And so I said, God, I just thank you that because of what Jesus did for us, we get to be healed. And I also took authority over that sickness. And I said, sickness, you have to go in Jesus name. Because Jesus told us, he told his followers that, behold, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. And that's actually talking about demonic powers. And then it says, and and he says, and over every power of the enemy. And then he says, nothing by any means shall harm you. And so I prayed that uh, uh, against that sickness. I prayed that over my daughter. Literally like a minute before I began praying, I put my hand on her forehead. It was really hot, obvious, very obvious, uh, you know, fever. Um, as soon as I'm done praying, I put my hand back on her forehead and I notice. as soon as I put my hand on, I notice uh, a, a sweat has started, you know, to pour down her, her forehead a little bit and her head actually feels cool, um, especially compared to the way it felt a minute beforehand. And so she goes to sleep soon after that. The next morning she gets up, she's a hundred percent better and, and she's been great ever since. And here's, here's the, uh, the reason I tell the story is because honestly, I'm giving you an opportunity I'm trying to give you an opportunity to to gauge your reaction, to look at how do I react when I hear stories like that. And I don't know if that was the coronavirus or not. It probably wasn't, to be honest. It could have just been a fever. You know, it could have been the flu. It could have been something else. I don't know. But that's just one of many times when I've seen God come through for me when I begin to pray and when I'm believing on his word, when I'm believing in what Jesus did for me on the cross but, but the encouragement I believe the Holy Spirit is trying to, to get me to say to you today is don't be afraid. Have faith in God. Believe that what God says is true, that what he said he's going to do, he is going to do, that he never leaves us or forsakes us, that, that you know nothing is impossible with God. What's impossible with people is not impossible for God. 
God can do all things. God created, if he created the heavens and the earth, he can sure take care of what is going on in the earth right now. He's not worried about it. He's not, he's, it doesn't freak him out. We shouldn't be freaked out either. Why? Because if we know Jesus Christ, we are the children of God and he loves his children. He loves you. And, and, and I feel like I need to say this too. If you're watching this and you're listening to this, um, and, and maybe you're feeling, I don't know, ashamed, or maybe you feel like I'm, I'm judging you a little bit. Please know that is not my heart. I am not trying to judge you at all. Um, if, if you are not, if you know you're not at this place where you feel like you can respond to testimonies with faith, or maybe you don't even believe that God does miracles today, my heart is not to judge you or to, or to try to condemn you or put shame on you at all. My hope is to encourage you to, to, to make a decision today to walk in faith, to make a decision to allow God to start building up your faith. So one more thing I want to share with you is if you're watching this video and you need prayer today, maybe it is, maybe you're suffering from the coronavirus or maybe someone you know is, or it could be another health issue or any other thing that you could use prayer for. Um, I do want to give you a really great resource. I don't personally have uh, the resources available to pray with everyone or the time that it takes to pray with everyone myself. Um, but I get a lot of comments on my YouTube channel of people uh, requesting prayer um, for a lot of different things. So I want to share with you a really awesome helpline. It's, it's a prayer um, request helpline that you can call in and you can talk to somebody. And these are people, this is a ministry I trust. Um, these are people that are believers. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. They are full of faith. They are ready to speak the word of God over you, ready to encourage you and ready to agree with you in prayer. And so if that's something you need, I'm sharing the link uh, and, and the number that you can call in the description of this video. And this ministry has not asked me to do this or anything. I did get permission um, to share this information, but they haven't, they haven't asked me to do this. I'm not getting paid to do this or anything like that. I am, I am sharing this because I don't want you to be left with um, you know, no one to pray for you. I, don't, I want you to have someone who is full of faith and who's ready to agree with you in prayer. And so if that's something you need, go check that out. So I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope it was an encouragement to you. Uh, yes, I do realize my hair looks a little nuts right now. Uh, since I've been in quarantine, I haven't had a chance to go get a haircut. Um, and I also ran out of stuff I usually fix it with, so it's just going crazy at the moment. But also a few things I wanna remind you of. If you haven't downloaded your free PDF copy of my testimony book, My Mess, go to troyblackvideos.com and get your free copy today. And if you haven't followed me on Facebook, go check out my Facebook and my Instagram and follow me on those platforms. I love y'all so much and I'll see you next time.